Our next learning moment was a request from a student group working on one of their projects. Uh, today, to do with uh, summary data in link using groups, right, along with aggregate functions. And this is so important uh, a skill to have in the real world because there's nothing, you know, sells the value of your software development to a business client than summary data, right? Now, it's not the first time discussing this. In fact, right back last term in our main textbook tutorial, uh, there was, oh, I gotta do a external, right? There was this whole section here right on sort, filter, page, and group, right? Group there. So in that case, we did an about page where we summarized, you know, for each enrollment date, how many students enrolled that day and so on, right? Using a bit of link and away we go, uh, using the group by approach. So that's good. You've got that reference to go back to, but I thought we'd do our own as well. And to accomplish that, uh, I just have a little copy paste file here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, this is going to be quick. I'm going to grab the latest version of our medical office that I think 7.1 and I have that open. Now, the only trick is <laughs> for this demo, I looked around for something I could do aggregate functions on some min max and so on. And the only thing I had was the extra fee uh, that is sometimes applied to appointments, right? For medical notes and things like that for doctor appointments. Uh, the only trouble is, and this is again, so far, I think my the most irritating aspect of using SQL Lite as opposed to SQL Server, uh, decimal doesn't work for aggregate functions, just like it doesn't work for uh, summing and comparisons. It's only a quality because in truth in SQLite, it's really just stored not as a numeric type. So the first thing I had to do then is uh, convert the extra fee property over to double, right? So we can actually do math with it. So I have it open here. I'm not going to make you watch me go through that process, but just a quick reminder of a couple of the aspects. So if I'll come down here to appointment. Okay, so really uh, it will work fine with our data type for currency and so on. All I really have to do is change it to double. Now, of course, this will change the database as well. Uh, the way to find out where I'm in trouble in my code is, of course, just to do some builds. You have to keep on building over and over after you solve some errors, right? So you see that M is the way to indicate that this constant is uh, decimal. By the way, M doesn't mean money for decimal. M just means it's the first letter starting at the beginning of the word that was available. <laughs> so D works for double, right? Now I have to do another build again and so on until I find all the build errors because there will be more. And yeah, so here we go. Can't be applied. So there we are. Uh, so here in the view where we're adding up our total fees and so on. So we have to change uh, again. D and so on. So I won't make you watch me do all of them. Okay, so I've successfully fixed all the little spots where it referred to it as, as a de decimal, change them to double. So all I have to do now is make a new migration. Gosh, we've done this so many times. It's becoming old hat. I'll just delete the medical office migrations. I'll delete the, oh, I don't have the database. So we'll just get our common commands up here. I'm going to make the new migration and I won't make Okay, so I created, recreated the migration. I added our extra steps to the uh, migration itself, and I uh, did update the database. So we're ready to move on to the next part of our actual demo, right? So here's what we're going to do next. You do not technically need to use a view model. You can just put your data into the view data or view bag and pull it into the view, but there's so many advantages that it's almost always worth taking the time to create a view model. So I'm just gonna come down here. We're gonna add another class. One of the main reasons is it gives us opportunity to add our data annotations and supply that metadata, right? Plus then our scaffolding tools can work with it as a class and it can just save us an awful lot of work in the long run. Okay. So I'm going to be pulling data from appointment. I'm going to include the patient so I can list. My thought was, okay, for each patient, how many times have they had an appointment? And since we have those fees that I can now add up, you know, what's the total amount of extra fees we've charged them and things like that, right? Now, the tricky part is I want to be able to show the name of the patient, right? And that's not in the appointment. Uh, so I have to include patient. But remember, in the database, the patient name is made up of separate properties, first name, middle name, last name. 
So I can't just use the summary properties in my link query. I'll have to do that later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up good, good practices always have a primary key, right? If you really don't want to, you can specify that there's no primary key, but it's easier just to have one. And it usually works out well in the end, right? So what I'm going to throw in next are my first, middle, and last names. The reason I'm having them separate in my view model is I'm going to get them from the database, and I need to actually have them there uh, as separate entities. And then I can do the same kind of thing in my view model as I do in the actual uh, patient, right? I can just pull it all together into the full name with my expression here, giving it a display name so that I, as we build a view based on the view model, it will have that metadata there as well, right? Okay, so I'll just grab the next few ones there. It's pretty straightforward. All right, so I'm going to have an integer for the number of appointments because a count, of course, returns an integer number. And uh, again, supplying display names. Uh, total extra fees, okay? Uh, data type currency, just so we get the automatic format, formatting, but it is a double to correspond to the way extra fees is now set up in the appointment class. And then another double for the maximum fee charge. If you want to add minimums and averages, feel free, but this is enough to demonstrate the overall approach, right? So again, I could pull the data right into an anonymous object, even throw it in view data, but by taking the extra work of creating the view model, you'll see how it saves us so much work later on. Okay, so where are we going to do this? Well, I mean, the cleanest controller to work with is still our home controller, right? So when we come back up to controllers, and right now we have our, uh, our remember from our earlier work, we added in the medical office context. It didn't used to be here, but now we're using dependency injection to get the context in place in our home controller as well. We did that for our demo of our cascading drop downs, right? Choosing the provinces based on country and so on. Okay, so anyway, we have an index, we have a privacy, which we get from a link on the main layout page. So let's add a new action here, right? So I'll just add a new action result. I'm gonna call it APPT summary. Okay. No, it's not happy because it doesn't return anything yet, right? But we will in a minute, okay? Uh, first of all, I'm going to build my query. Now, maybe I'll do this so I can just var it. That'll work fine. I don't know, some summary query equals. Now, that I could use it with the uh, either of the syntaxes, but I'm getting more and more comfortable, and you probably are as well, just using the extension methods. So if I start with context, right? dot appointments and we want to dot include our patients your patient okay in each one right so here's where I can now start going dot group by now think back to when when we first learned SQL right? And when group by was introduced, there was one very important rule that you were taught. Anything that's going to be in the projection, in the output, a column in the data produced by the query in the projection that is not an aggregate function must, must be mentioned in the group by clause. That's how we would write an SQL command, a select command with group by. It has to be in the group by clause if we want it in the output and it's not an aggregate function. Well, we have something very similar here. So when I say group by, right, I can use an anonymous type for this. But when we define, sorry, <laughs> when we define the group by clause, basically, it's like this, okay? We're grouping by this new anonymous object. Well, this object then is basically the collection of fields that we're actually going to have in our projection, right, uh, that are, are not an aggregate function. Everything that's not an aggregate, but that has to appear. Uh, so it's the same fields that would be in our group by. So I'm going to include the patient ID, right? I'm going to include the patient in order to get the first name. 
and so on, right? Yep. A dot patient dot middle name. Now I need all these separate ways so that my view model can put it all together into my full name, right? And last name. Okay, so that defines what I'm grouping by, right? So again, let me emphasize for those who remember SQL, these are the things that I would have in the group by clause. Okay, now we can start selecting. I don't really have any where clauses. If I did, I just go dot where and put them in place, right? Now, so this is a new object. Now this is, so it's good, although you can use anything as a placeholder character here. Uh, we often use GRP for group, right? Because we're going to refer to the grouped data itself. And we're going to take that group and we're going to create a new, a new what? A new appointment summary, our class. Now it's not coming up with it because I don't have the using right in this uh, um, controller yet for the view model namespace. So we'll get that fixed in a second. For now, I'll just put appointment summary, right? Okay, and then we'll build our appointment summary object. Oh, I, that's why it's thrown off. I didn't want to have a bracket there yet, right? And that will come after here. Okay, so let me just maybe get that using in place so it doesn't keep complaining, using for view models. Okay, so inside here, I won't make you watch all this. We'll just get the code in place. So here, of course, are all the assignments, the different properties, okay, of our appointment summary view model, right? So we have the ID, that primary key is going to be the patient ID. First, middle, and last names come from the... Now, notice this, right? This is basically what I said is the equivalent to our group by in SQL, we refer to it as the key. The key of our group, right, are these fields here that we're grouping by, right? So I can access any one of them by going dot key dot, right, and then first name, middle name, last name. And of course, that's also how I got the patient ID because it's part of the key, uh, the defined group by clause, you might say. Okay, now for the aggregate functions that I want to add additional data in here, I just go to the group and, you know, I don't have to specify a field because remember how count works. You basically are counting records. You don't have to specify like I'm counting this or that field. You're just doing a dot count and that will get my number of appointments. Okay, now to sum, okay, I just go to the group dot sum and then I use a lambda expression just to basically pass the name of the field I want to sum up. So it'll be my total extra fees. And, you know, if you want to go further, averages and mins, but this is enough, I thought, to demonstrate the process. We'll also use group.max on the extra fee, and that gives me my maximum fee charged. Okay, so that gives me basically everything that I need for my link query. Then I'm just going to return view. And, of course, inside the view, well, I'm going to take my sum queue, right? And this is following the suggestion of our textbook tutorial, add as no tracking, right? Because we aren't going to try to manipulate this data in any way, shape, or form. And then I can just two list it. Uh, I'm not doing, notice I didn't make it asynchronous, so uh, that's okay. All right. So just a quick review then. We're adding a group by clause, okay? This defines the group by as it would be in SQL. We refer to it as the key for the grouping, right? And then we select from the group, we take data into our new view model class, right? Pulling all the data, some of it comes from the key when we want these individual properties. And then anything else that isn't in the key, we have to be applying some kind of an aggregate function or we can't include it, right? And we're just taking the convenience of building an appointment summary object or a collection of them. So it'll be an I enumerable collection by the time we're done. In fact, uh, okay, it's just an I queryable at this point, which is okay. Um, but after we two list it, then of course we'll get an I enumerable. So how are we going to display this, right? Well, you know, here is where 
that metadata really comes in handy having the appointment summary uh, actual view model because I can just right click and say add view <laughs> and I'll say a razor view I don't want empty I want it to do some work for me and if I select basically we want to list all this data the summary data so I'll select the list template right in which case I must supply a class well there's my appointment summary view model class right and that's it perfect okay so view name appt summary i can live with that for the view name it's just in the url and i'll click add and i probably should have checked for build errors first but i'm going to cross my fingers and hope i don't have any okay so you can see how the extra step of making the view model first really pays off here because we have our strongly typed view based on an I enumerable of our view uh, model, our appointment summary, right? So I'm just going to uh, fix up a bit of this, you know, use the full words here, appointment summary. Okay, we don't worry, need to worry about creating. This is just summary data. So some of the templated stuff we don't need. Now, again, we don't need first, middle, last name separate. Hey, this is pretty familiar stuff. I'll just change that to use because my view model has the full name, right? And then that's where my nice display names are gonna come into play here, right? See, I had one on the summary property and one on each of these. So that will work nicely for all of these. I don't need this last column. I won't be using it, right? Oh, I have an extra th tag there. Okay, so do the same thing here. This will be full name. We'll get rid of the other two name components. And I don't need this, right? And we aren't gonna try to do anything there. And that's basically it, right? The only thing I might do is I might add a, a link to my shared, my layout page and the shared views just so I can easily come to here. And because I'm in a hurry and I'm lazy, I'm, I'm not gonna worry about uh, doing this in a fancy way. I'll just stick it right beside uh, home, right? Oh, actually, all right, so I'll change this one since it's a copy. So this is the home controller. Oop. And it is our APP summary action. All right, so let's just see this work. Cross my fingers, hope to, <laughs> nah, hope to live. How's that? It'll take a little while because I remember I've got no database yet, so it's got to create the database, seed it, and so on. So, of course, we did set up our seed data. Oh, ah, um, to generate lots of appointments. So hopefully this will work. I just don't think it actually seeded. Sometimes the first time it takes it, you have to do it a second. There we go. So there we go. So here's for each patient, here's my summary data. How many times they've come for an appointment, the total amount of extra fees, okay? The maximum fee charged, right? Now, of course, these numbers aren't all the same because they're different number of appointments. But remember, this data is actually just coming from the default in the constructor for the appointment. But let's go in and actually, uh, I'll have to log in uh, and then I'll make a couple of changes. I'll skip that for now. Let's go to patients. If I go to details on somebody, here's all the appointments. So uh, maybe I'll make this one $200. No, I'll make it five, $5,700. Ooh, that's a big extra fee, right? Uh, let's... Uh, do another one uh, just to show that we don't always charge a fee. Okay, save that. Let's go back, pick on somebody else. Maybe we'll pick on Jane here and I'll do the same kind of thing. Uh, all right, so if I go to the appointment summary, then we can see the changes here. So the maximums is where I'm seeing those big values, right? And of course it's changed the total amount and so on and so forth. Okay. So there we are. So you can see how easy it is to pull summary data together. As I've said, like repeatedly, doing a view model can really save time 
uh, really simplifies, you know, especially things like construction of the view and so on. All right, enjoy. <laughs>